Hey everybody, it's J.J. Dillon, the leader of the original Four Horsemen, and you're listening to Talk Impact Radio. My, um, my, my final question to you, um, and this comes from Wikipedia, which you can believe or cannot believe. Um, <laughs> the first, first off, part of, uh, part of what they say is that when you were in WCW, you were partly responsible for bringing in Vince Russo and Ed Ferrara. Um, one, was that true? And two, um, if that is true, why do you think that they were able to succeed in the WWF writing, whereas when they came to WCW, they, all they seemed to do was hot shot and they seem to make things worse rather than better. Was it politics? Was it them themselves? Was it a combination of things at that time? Um, you know, what was it? Well, I, I went to work for WCW at the time when uh, uh, Eric Bischoff was, uh, was in power, and he grew the numbers in terms of uh, gross revenue uh, at a phenomenal rate. The problem was that he was not from a wrestling background, didn't understand the wrestling business, and never had a business plan, so it was inevitable that uh, uh, that what he was doing was was going to fail in time. And I was still there, and there were people who finally realized the extent of the damage in terms of uh, guaranteed talent contracts and, and and just a lot of other things that uh, Bischoff was responsible for, and. I, I truly believe that, that that it was still possible to to right the ship, but changes had to be made. And I did receive a call from a third party who was a a, a friend of Vince Russo, uh, someone that I knew, who basically sent out a feeler to me saying that Vince Russo was uh, not very happy, you know, working for Vince McMahon, felt he was underappreciated, so forth and so on, and. Uh, and so uh, I, I had them uh, give him my number, and Vince Russo did call me. I did set up a meeting, and uh, at that weekend meeting, that was, you know, we tried to keep it under wraps because if things didn't work out, realizing that uh, Vince McMahon, you know, could be very vindictive, and uh, it was to protect Vince Russo. And in the course of that conversation, Ed Ferrara's name came up, and. Um, to be honest with you, Vince Russo had all the had all the uh, the right answers, and uh, I had not worked with him one on one as as such at the at the WWE, uh, but I knew that he'd started with a magazine and, and had gotten close to Vince, and basically uh, Vince McMahon understands the business. He is a wrestling person. You have to give him credit for that. Now his his vision of what a wrestler should look like and what wrestling is may be much narrower than than, than my interpretation. But uh, Vince has enjoyed success and he's had some very talented people like Pat Patterson uh, around him for a substantial amount of time that that really created to much of the success of, of the WWF. I, I attribute a lot of the success to Pat Patterson and, and his influence. But um, Vince Russo was successful, in my opinion, at the WWF because he was monitored. He did have someone who uh, basically had final say to say yes or no. Um, the impression was that he was coming into uh, WCW with the uh, same understanding that uh, he would be given an opportunity to succeed, but also he would have people who were experienced in the business that were that were monitoring his product and. I think Vince Russo came there with a different agenda. Um, I think that uh, he may have felt that he this was his opportunity to prove to Vince McMahon that uh, it was really him and not Vince after all. And unfortunately, these are the kind of things that you you can't find out. You you have to take some chances, and we took a chance with Vince Russo, and and uh, uh, you know the project failed. He got there and just uh, went crazy on his own. And um, just uh, I took notes of the shows, and, and the, the amount of wrestling time each week got less and less. Uh, you would have run-ins in, in, in virtually every match, foreign objects. You would have no uh, no conclusions, and it became a, a thing where it was like a, a train wreck in progress. And I tried to have a meeting with with. with uh, we all came into a room, and. Uh, I tried to say, look, you know, we need to find some kind of a happy medium here. It's good to have fresh ideas and so forth, but uh, the direction that we're going is, uh, you know, I think is, is 
eventually going to be catastrophic. And I remember he backed up to the door and said, hey, it's basically my way or the highway, and you should all be uh, uh, using all your energy to uh, to fight the standards and practices people that were objecting to a lot of things that he was doing. <laughs> and uh, eventually uh, it, it, it failed, and that that's really the, the, the truth of what happened. 